without wasting any further time let's go into our demo class if you like this class consider joining my aviation classes uh, navigation batch gonna start on 25th of this month 25th of june most probably plus minus one or two days today the topic is critical point it is the very first lesson in the navigation syllabus in general navigation uh, general navigation constitutes around 35 marks of total 100 marks uh, i'd like to tell you a story today i know a captain he is currently working in a major airline which obviously i cannot name back then he was working with in future airlines this story happened when he was very new to the airline i have animated actually the whole story into a bunch of slides to make it more live and you will know why this story is connected to our class today let me share my screen with you imagine this is the plane uh, they were flying that day and this is the there, there's a pilot there's a pilot who is he okay he was the captain remember our guy is the first officer that this captain is a different guy so that day this first officer was with this captain what happened was this captain suddenly said these things i am having severe chest pain he said ah and he went unconscious this is a very unexpected situation he is a very new guy he is getting accustomed with the plane he is trying to learn things and then the here is our first officer and then he said he thought it's my call now what do i do see it depends on his decision whether the captain is going to survive or not and he immediately asked if there were any doctors in the cabin cabin crew replied there were no doctors on board now his only chance of saving a captain is to put the plane on the ground as soon as possible right so what is the factor time is the factor the day they were flying from chennai to port blair he was on water there was no alternate destination he could go so with he should turn back to chennai or should continue to port blair let's see what happened next so today's topic critical point point of equal time time or equi time point Uh, let us uh, talk about our topic for some time and let's come back to the story again see this critical point is a point from where if you go back or go front time taking taken will be same so t1 is equals to t2 so critical point is the point from which time taken to destination and departure is same critical point has other name it is point of equal time pet it is very commonly used or equi time point so what is this critical point critical point is that point on a way on the way between departure and destination from where the time taken to go backwards or to go forwards is the same so in this case the pilot has to know whether he crossed critical point or not the first officer which we are who, whom we are talking about he has to know whether he crossed his critical point or not because see from this point if the time is equal if you did not reach this point you can turn back and reach your departure very quickly or you can if you are here for example you have already crossed the critical point so you have to go forward to reach the destination to land your plane very soon he, again this is our first officer he is thinking something raghu gave me two documents before push back uh, one of them was saying about critical point distance and time were mentioned that means who is this raghu this raghu is the dispatcher what does this dis dispatcher do before you take any flight uh he will ask you to sign a couple of documents revealing the uh, i mean the flight you have to take the uh, passengers uh, on board etc etc among those signs you also sign two 
other documents one is one of them is critical point okay before you start even started the flight you were sitting on the airport and having a coffee ragu came and told you your critical point would be at a distance of say for example 100 nautical miles or he said you are starting at 2 am you will reach your critical point in 1 and 1/2 hour so it would be like 3:30 am how did the dispatcher know where is the critical point let's see how to calculate a critical point so for example you are going from this is your a this is your b you are going from a to b let the total distance be d assume your critical point is here see critical point can lie anywhere on the track depends on winds i'll uh, i mean in later slides you will know why it depends on winds how it changes with winds etc etc this is the critical point let us assume distance to critical point b x see if the total distance is d and this distance is x what would be this distance d minus x right okay the departure aerodrome has other name it is also called as home the destination aerodrome has other name it is also called as outbound from this cp you can go back or you can go forward right so while going back your speed ground speed is represented by h what is this h ground speed if you are going out your speed ground speed is represented by o this is home bound ground speed this is outbound ground speed okay time is equal to distance by speed right so the definition of critical point is from critical point if you go backwards or if you go forward time will be same t1 is equal to t2 right when t1 is equal to t2 you know this distance is x x and your speed is h is equal to this distance is d minus x and your speed is o so solve this and you will get distance to cp x is distance to cp right x into o is h into d minus h into x so x is nothing but distance to cp so distance to cp is equals to dh by o plus h this is the formula to calculate distance to cp and you are going to remember this formula without this formula don't think you can do all this stuff in the exam it's going to take a lot of time the time is a factor in navigation exam time is a very big factor as you know time is a factor for critical point also time is a factor in navigation exam also okay so you have to remember this formula so now let us uh, talk uh, a bit more about h and o see in aviation industry whenever you are calculating anything related to performance you assume that your one engine fails that means uh, see in this scenario the captain had had a chest pain and he went unconscious that could be a heart attack it's a medical emergency the other emergencies could be failure of one engine then airplane at from that point it wants to fly forward or or it wants to turn back it cannot perform with the same speed when it had two engines right so o and h are considered as reduced speeds with single engine okay so now you know distance to cp is d into h by o plus h where h and o are reduced ground speeds d is the total distance 
time to CP. Time to CP is distance to CP by ground speed full. See, why can't we write as outbound speed? Why is this ground speed full? Why not O? Because O, I said it as reduced speeds, right? We are assuming when the emergency happens, our aircraft also loses one engine, right? So, when you are sitting at the airport, you are sitting at the airport and thinking in what time I will go to my CP. So, you have to travel 100 nautical miles and your speed is 50 nautical miles per hour, right? So, you will go to your destination in 2 hours. So, this while calculating time, you are both engines are working. So, you have to as uh, you have to take uh, denominator as ground speed full. So, distance to CP is dh by o plus h where h o and h are reduced ground speeds. Time to CP is distance to CP by ground speed full assuming two engines are working. So, in some questions they will give two engine speed and then they will uh, use one engine speed. In those questions, uh, the you will uh, calculate the distance to CP using one engine speeds h and o will be one engine speeds and then you will calculate time to CP by using ground speed full that is two engine speeds okay okay let, to make things clear uh, i will give you a brief idea about speed see what is not not is nautical mile per hour see, one nautical mile is equals to 1.852 kilometers for example from a to b the distance is 1000 nautical miles and your aircraft speed is 100 knots so it can reach A to B in 10 hours since it is traveling 100 nautical miles per hour so to travel 1000 nautical miles it will take 10 hours okay now let us talk about true air speed true air speed versus ground speed what's the difference for example this is the earth you are traveling from Chennai right to Port Blair ok so you will start flying like this like this And you will finally land into problem. So, assume the distance between this point and this point is 100 nautical miles. What is true air speed? True air speed is speed in relation with surrounding air. For example, you are at this point, uh, I will write here, this point is here, here, around here, so I will I'll represent this aeroplane here, this is the surrounding air, ok, if this air is still, implies there are no wings, then the speed of the aeroplane with respect to ground, ground speed is speed of aircraft, respect to ground right see let us see at this point if there are 20 knots headwinds that means aeroplane is going in this direction with say 100 knots so it will travel 100, 100 nautical miles in one hour if there are no winds for example if the winds is in this direction with 20 knots that means 20 nautical miles the aeroplane is being pushed back Okay, so in one hour in still winds it can travel 100 nautical miles with respect to the ground. But if the winds are headwinds, headwinds are the winds which are opposite to you. If the winds are headwinds, the aeroplane is pushed back by 20 knots, right? If there is 20 knot headwind. So instead of traveling 100 nautical miles, it can travel only 80 now because 20 nautical miles it has been pushed back, right? So ground speed. 
ground speed is equals to two air speed of aircraft plus or minus winds minus when it is a headwind plus when it is a tailwind this is a flower bracket sorry tailwind so, understood so what is a tailwind the wind if you are going like this if the wind is coming from this you are pushed that is a tailwind what is headwind if you are going like this you are pushed backwards that is a headwind so now there are other different kinds of speeds equivalent air speed calibrated air speed etc those are like not today's topics and believe me they are also very interesting now let us discuss about how cp varies with winds see for example if you are going from here to here from a to b if there are no winds the ground speed in any direction will be equal to tas right so if you go back or if you go forward with single engine the speed of the aircraft should be same so in nil winds o and h are equal nil winds implies o is equals to h agreed so from this point if you take this as the midpoint the distance is same this is x and this is also same right if this is the midpoint the distance is x when distance is equal and speeds are equal time taken should be equal right so when there are nil winds or when there are no winds the cp will lie in the mid point understood this is a theory question and it is very frequently asked there are no winds cp lies in the mid point what happens when there are winds for example you are going in this direction from a to b cp is in the midpoint for example if a 20 knot headwind develops what happens is see if you are at the midpoint to travel to b it will take more time because you have a headwind it is pushing you back right so but if you go backwards you have a tailwind now it will push you forward towards a so your speed will be more when going back in tailwind your speed will be more so this time will be less this time will be more so the cp will not lie here anymore the cp will lie at this point so this is tailwind this is headwind so he in this direction speed is slow in this direction speed is fast so to cover when your speed is slow you can cover only less distance when your speed is fast you can cover more distance right so the distance to cp will move into the winds so remember this line as it is when there are winds cp always moves into the wind understood that means if you are going like this you if you have a headwind cp will lie here somewhere cp will move always into the wind okay if you are going like this and you have a tailwind cp will move uh, towards your tail towards your back because the wind is coming in this direction so the cp will lie towards your departure understood also know the position of cp doesn't change with fuel cp is independent of fuel if you carry like half tank or full tank the cp will not change okay now coming to uh, tas for example if your aircraft you're going from here to here you know 
with nil wind cp lies in the midpoint with developing headwinds cp will move into the winds right new cp will be here cp new what happens when your performance of the aircraft is reduced for example tas of the aircraft is decreased if you are flying with 200 knots now you are flying with only 190 knots consider this scenario as developing headwind there are a lot of complex calculations i mean you can take examples of your own uh, substitute in the formula with decreased tas and you will come to the same conclusions so decrease in tas is nothing but developing headwind scenario okay so if you are going like this if your tas is reduced from 200 to 190 think of it as developing a 10 knot headwind okay so cp moves into wind so new cp will be here understood i am carrying extra fuel which will it make any difference will the point of cp change with fuel no cp is independent of endurance endurance is nothing but the time you can fly with the fuel you have so why am i saying this point because there is a next chapter called pnr point of no return or point of safe return in that chapter uh, pnr depends on fuel PNR is a function of endurance. So I want to make things clear. CP doesn't depend on fuel or CP is independent of endurance. TAS versus CP. As I told, TAS is reduced. CP will move further into it. Think of this scenario just as headwind developing. So now we will talk in depth about beam winds. So what are beam winds? Any winds that are perpendicular to the track. If you are going from A to B, this is your track and this is your aircraft so what happens is like any winds those are perpendicular to the track these are called beam winds what happens when beam winds is like the aircraft is pushed like this okay so the pilot corrects the direction and he flies like this back and will reach the destination but he can also do one more thing airplane was in this direction so he will fly in this direction so the beam winds pushes him like this so his speed vector is like this in this direction this is aircraft speed so now if you divide this vector into two components this vector will cancel out this vector and the aircraft will move in this direction so the aircraft actual heading will be in this direction but the aircraft will be actually following this track okay this will be the heading heading of the aircraft this is the track of the aircraft okay so if this is the speed of the aircraft it is divided into two components right to fight the winds if these are winds this uh, this is cancelled so the speed of the aircraft is decreased So what happens to distance to CP? For example, you know the formula dH by O plus H. See, if you go in this direction or if you go in this direction, both directions O and H will decrease, right? But they will decrease proportionately. If you take the formula, distance to CP is equal to dH by O plus H. If H, they decrease proportionately, right? If H becomes H by 2, O becomes O by 2. Okay, so if you take the formula D into H by 2 by O in O plus H by 2, sorry, O by 2 plus H by 2. If you take 1 by 2 common, 1 by 2 will be here. This take 1 by 2 will be in the denominators. This will get cancelled and distance to CP will remain the same. Okay, there is no place on the screen. I'm sorry distance to cp will be same you know that now distance to cp will be same in b means what happens to time to cp you are going from here to here your cp is here cp uh, distance will not change with b means but time to cp as your aircraft is flying this heading and it has two components and this is cancelled this component will be this component will be less right 
so the aircraft is slower now because o uh, as i gave in the last example o became o by 2 and h uh, h became h by 2 so ground speed full will also decrease you know time to cp is equals to distance to cp by ground speed full right distance to cp is not changed but ground speed full is decreased so time to cp will increase okay so in beam winds distance to cp will remain same time to cp will increase okay let's go back to our slides this slide you saw see in the beam winds distance to cp and time to cp distance to cp is same and time to cp will increase guys now go ahead pause the screen solve the following problems and if you can get all four answers you are good to go these are old questions from dgc exams okay but uh, this story didn't end here i have one more special question to solve question and it's kind of tricky let us decode the question first you are going from a to b a to b the total distance between a and b is 1500 nautical miles so this total distance is 1500 nautical miles the critical point was calculated to be at 800 nautical miles say this is the midpoint this is 750 since this is 1500 total distance is 1500 this is 750 is calculated to be at 800 nautical miles that is cp so this cp was calculated at 800 with the headwind as forecasted but during the actual flight it was realized that the forecast was an actual tailwind so there was a mistake in the forecast uh, the forecast was meant to be uh, uh, telling the about tailwind but it told about headwind and the cp was calculated now they have asked calculate distance to cp you know distance to cp is equals to dh by o plus h given the distance you don't know h since you have no task task is not given even the headwind uh, it was told headwind was forecasted but how much headwind also we don't know so we know nothing of h and o and but the options are given in numbers for example if you think see when there was uh, let me take another color when there was headwind cp moved into the winds from 750 from center point it moved to 800 right so now headwind was Uh, forecasted but it the actual wind is tailwind so the wind will be tailwind so the cp will be in this direction right so the cp should be less than 750 agree so 850 is not the answer 800 is not the answer S answer should be among 700 and 600 see for example you have calculated the distance of cp from this point and this point to this point saying it as 800 not come because you had a headwind in the forecast now think of the scenario headwind changing into tailwind headwind changing into tailwind as you are traveling from the other end so you are starting you know, traveling starting from b imagine you are starting from b so now you have a tailwind so you are going from a to b headwind was forecasted but now it's tailwind so this we are representing here so now you have a tailwind that means in this direction if you are going in this side if you are going in this direction imagine you are coming actually from b so what happens the same amount of headwind will be coming so if the cp if with no winds the cp will be in the midpoint with the headwind cp was at uh, 800 nautical miles now cp would be at the same distance in the opposite side because just think headwind becoming tailwind as you coming from the opposite direction so the gap here is 50 so the gap here would be 50 to cp would be here by 750 minus uh, 50 would be 700 so the answer is 700 nautical miles this is a tricky question but this 
kind of questions are commonly asked and believe me in all airline examinations only these kind of questions will be asked so in our class in the real class we will do all these kinds of stuff and these will be separately highlighted in the notes given to you thank you for listening to this and please join my classes if you like my demo class new batch will be starting on uh, june 25th of this month you're welcome thank you